Don't talk to strangers. In the park. Part one. I've got a new ball. I told Leon and Marcos. Let's go to the park and play catch. The park was almost empty. There was only a man and a dog. Leon, Marcos, and I played, and the dog chased the ball. The man watched us play, but then he left the park. Look, said Leon, the dog is still here. The man left him behind. Maybe it's not his dog, I said. So whose is it? Asked Marcos. It could be lost, I answered. Let's go and ask some people if they know the dog. Maybe they will recognize him and take him to his owners. I'm not asking, said Leon. My mom always says, don't talk to strangers. And then she tells me a story about Butterball. I have an idea, said Marcos. We could stay here with the dog until the owner comes for him. Then Leon can tell us the story about Butterball. All right, Leon and I agreed. Butterball, Leon's story. Once there was a little boy called Butterball who lived with his mother in the middle of the woods. Who lived with his mother in a house in the woods. One day, their dog began barking. Butterball, said the mother. Go and see who is coming. Butterball looked, came back, and said, a stranger is coming with her head under her arm and a sack on her back. Butterball's mother said, don't talk to that stranger. It must be a troll. Run and hide. The troll came to the door. Good day she said. Is Butterball home today? No, he's not, the mother said, and she closed the door. That's too bad, the troll said. I've got a present for him, a little silver knife. Here I am, said Butterball, who was listening. He came out from under a bush. My back aches, said the troll. You'll have to get in the sack and pull out the knife yourself. When Butterball crawled in, the troll tied the sack and carried it into the woods. Soon, she got tired, so she lay down for a nap. A butterball found the knife, cut a hole in the sack, and jumped out. Then he ran home to his mother. When the troll woke up and found Butterball gone, she was very angry. The next day, the troll came back.
Good day, said the troll. Is Butterball home today? No, he's not, said his mother, and she went into the house. Too bad, called the troll. I had a silver spoon for him. Here I am, said Butterball, and he came out of hiding. He climbed into the sack to get the silver spoon. The troll closed it and left. But this time, she didn't stop. She went all the way home. There, she said to her daughter, Cook what's in the sack. I'm going to wash in the river. The daughter boiled some water, and she opened the sack. Hello, Auntie, said Butterball. The daughter was confused. Was the boy her nephew? Then she shouldn't cook him. I see some bugs in your hair. Butterball said. Please pick them out for me, the daughter said, putting her head on the table. Butterball threw the sack over her head and ran back home to his mother. He never spoke to strangers again. That's a scary story, I said. A man was coming in the park. Maybe that's the owner coming to get the dog, I said. But the man ignored us, and the dog didn't budge. Marcos, go and ask the man if he knows the dog, said Leon. I'm not asking, said Marcos. He looks kind of strange, like one of the people from the story I've heard. Tell us the story, I said. The Lost Dog, Marco's Story. One evening, Ben went to the corner store to buy a bag of chips. He took his dog with him. Ben tied the dog's leash to a post in front of the store and went inside. When Ben came out of the store, his dog was not there. Ben called him, but he did not come. Ben did not know what to do. There was a man on the street coming toward him. Excuse me, said Ben, but did you see my dog? What did he look like? asked the man. He had big, black, pointed ears, said Ben. Did they look like these? The man showed Ben his ears. They were big, black, and pointed. Ben ran away. Soon, he met another man. Excuse me, said Ben. But did you see my dog? What did he look like? asked this other man. He had huge eyes, said Ben. Did they look like these? The man took off his sunglasses. He had eyes like pancakes, 
that covered half of his face. Ben got scared and ran. He almost bumped into a woman standing on the sidewalk. What's your hurry? The woman asked. I'm looking for my dog, said Ben. What did he look like? asked the woman. One of his paws was missing, answered Ben. Were they paws like these? asked the woman. She grabbed Ben's shoulders. Instead of hands, she had enormous tiger paws. Ben tore himself away from her and ran all the way home. When he got to his house, he found his dog waiting for him. Wow, I'm scared, giggled Leon. I know a story about a stranger who looked totally normal. But she was a witch, I said. Shall I tell you? Yes, said Leon and Marcos. Hurry, I'm going home soon, added Leon. The cousin, my story. Jamal and Salma were brother and sister. Their parents died, so they were always hungry and looking for food. One day, Jamal decided to go to the countryside and see if he could earn money by working in the fields. But no matter how much he asked, no one offered him any work. On the way back home, he met an old woman. Where have you been? She asked. So, Jamal told her everything. Bring your sister and come live with me, said the woman. You can share my wealth. Who are you? asked Jamal. Your cousin, said the woman. I'm old and alone. I would enjoy your company. Jamal couldn't believe his luck. So he ran to tell his sister. That evening, Jamal and Salma left town with a woman who took them to her house. She fed them a big dinner. When the woman went to the barn to get some milk, Salma followed, thinking she might help. But as she got close, Salma heard the woman talking to her cow. Tomorrow, I will eat my guests she said. The cow mooed as if to say, no, no, no. Salma did not wait any longer. She ran back to the house to tell her brother, we must leave at once, she said. The woman plans to eat us. Are you crazy? said Jamal. You must have heard wrong. Look how generous and kind she has been. But Salma was scared and did not sleep all night. In the morning, Salma followed the woman to the barn again. Again, she heard her say, 
Today, I will eat my guests. And the cow mooed, as if to say, "No, no, no." Salma did not wait any longer. She ran to her brother and said, "Let's go now, this instant." But Jamal wouldn't listen. What's wrong with you? Asked Salma. Stay if you like, but I'm leaving. When the old woman returned, she found only Jamal. She locked the door, screeching, "I'm not your cousin. I'm a witch." And I love to eat the fools who come into my house. She pulled a big metal file out of her pocket, and began to sharpen her teeth. Now tell me, what part of you should I eat first? Jamal shivered. Salma knew this would happen. But I didn't listen," he said. Then, Jamal had an idea. In the park. Part two. I have to go home," said Leon. "I don't think anyone is coming for the dog. Bye, dog," we said. We started walking, but the dog followed us. Let's take him home. We can ask my mom what to do," said Leon. When we got to Leon's house, his mom was not there. She had left a note. "I'll be back soon." We gave the dog some cat food, and a bowl of water to drink. I was thinking," said Leon. "What if we put the dog on a leash, and see if maybe he'll lead us to his house? It's worth a try," said Marcos. We made a leash out of rope. And put it on the dog. The dog started pulling us along, and we followed him. He was leading us back toward the park. There were a few houses near the park, and the dog stopped in front of one of them. We can't just leave him on the porch," said Marcos. We have to make sure that he's back with his owner. So, we rang the bell, then ran back to the sidewalk. A man came to the door. "Is this your dog?" we called. "No, he belongs to my brother," said the man. Coming outside, I didn't even notice he was missing. Thank you for returning him. That's okay, we said, and we went on our way. Did you see that man's ears? I asked. They were huge and pointed.